show you how to hone an engine. Uh, we're going to use one of these uh, dingleberry hones to start with. Uh, a lot of people say you have to bore an engine. Um, this one doesn't really require it. Uh, there's not really a ring ridge on there. It looks like it is. This is where the rings go, but uh, you can't actually feel anything up here with your hand. Some engines you can feel it like catch on your nail, but this one's actually really good. But you can kind of see uh, this engine has 200,000 miles on it. Uh, the cylinders are kind of glazed. It has cross hatching, but they're they're just kind of shiny and glazed. But we're gonna use one of these hones right here. Um, so there's different grits you can get from like I think 240 to 400. But you want to call your ring manufacturer and ask and figure out what you want. I'm using more of a Molly ring, and they recommended a 320 grit home. So that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, you want some kind of lubricant. Some people want certain oils. As long as you got something, it's better than nothing. I'm just going to use this Zep stuff. It's somewhere WD-40. But you can use motor oil, transmission fluid, whatever. As long as you got some kind of oil. But basically, we're going to be running the drill at a higher speed uh, and going in and out to get that uh, cross hatching pattern with our drill. Basically, to replicate, should be kind of those angles you can kind of see in there. But I'm gonna set the camera up and do one of these and show how the process works. All right, so I got uh, my hone on my drill. I'm gonna go ahead and soak the cylinders down with my uh, lubricant. I'm gonna go ahead and soak the hone down with everything, get everything nice and lubricated, ready for hunting. And we're gonna go in at a high speed, really quick to make those that uh, cross hatching. And then we're going to pull it out and you want to have uh, some kind of a rag or something handy to wipe it and check inside of the cylinder because there'll be little areas where the oil and the piston like or well the piston won't touch the cylinder wall and there'll be like oil build up and we're going to clean all that out so just that little bit we got still a little bit right here uh, still a little glaze down in there I think I'll show that with the camera so you can see right here and a little bit farther down we've got a little bit of glazing still in the cylinder I get it to focus where I exactly want but you can it's kind of hard to tell but just from my eye you can see it's glazed right there and we want to do a little bit more on there it's probably a little bit where it's not perfectly round but we're just going to keep going a little bit more until it perfectly cleans up so we're going to relube that cylinder and work it one more time. And you don't want to, um, when you're finished, you don't want to stop in the bore and then pull your hone out because then you'll have all the lines pulling out. So you want to, when you want to stop, you want to pull it out with it uh, running still full speed. So I'm going to wipe it all out again. And what's pretty good. I might hit it one more time possibly, but everything looks pretty good on that one. All right, I just did this side, so here's what it looks like. Um, you can see that cross hatching in there. So you can see I got a little bit more to do right here. Still a little bit to clean up. Uh, I was going to try to show a little bit of ring ridge, but this motor is actually really good. I saw a little bit right here. I don't know if I won't even pick up on the camera. Uh, they kind of, I don't know. With my eye, you can kind of see a little line right there at the end of my finger. A little tiny bit, but if you have bad ring ridge, you'll have like a, uh, still a glaze spot. But this motor is really good, so you can see the tops. And here's the final of the other side here. It cleaned up most of the way. There's still a tiny bit you can barely see in that one. But overall this motor looks really good. And also, so for the lifter bores, um, they get like the oil build up in them. 
Uh, you can scotch bright it out. Uh, use like oh, 600 grit sandpaper. Uh, I got one of these, little tiny hone. I just did the same thing I did here, up here before. Um, they're dirty now because of the deburring, but I did the same thing just to clean the oil mess out of them. But now, pretty much the next step for the block is we're gonna take it outside. We're gonna degrease everything. Uh, and we're gonna pressure wash everything, and it has to be absolutely spotless because uh, even one chip's gonna tear up a bearing. Uh, that's why I took all these um, plugs out, oil plugs. We're gonna blow the pressure washer down every single oil port. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna really clean this block because one chip is gonna tear something up. So it has to be absolutely clean before we do anything else. All right, so this portion of the video, uh, I'm gonna do the crankshaft. I think I'm gonna put this in with the uh, block video also. But you can see right here, these are your uh, rod bearing oil holes. And over here, you have your mains. And they're like cross drilled between. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna open these up to prevent the uh, oil shear. Um, you can get them machined. Some people use these, uh, rock wheels, some people use the um, regular burr bits. I'm gonna use one of these and a drill. And we're just gonna go in here and kind of take off right on the hole, like right here. You kinda wanna make it um, a little bit elongated so it's teardrop. Cause when you're running high RPMs, you don't want it to go so fast your oil's being sheared. Cause there's barely an edge uh, chamfer on here. But we're gonna just pretty much make it bigger. Um, some. The machine shops will make it a little bit better, but this is a good free way to do it. Um, you just want to be careful not to let it go over top of the crank and make marks. If you do, it's not really the end of the world. We can sand it out with some emery cloth. You just have to be really careful. It's just easier just to not do it. You can put sometimes duct tape on everything. Um, I'm just going to use a steady hand to get on it. I don't know if I can even show it in the video because I, I really got to get on it to uh, not mess it up. It's, it's pretty difficult, but I'm going to try to show best I can here. I mean, basically you're doing that. It's, it's a lot. It, you're gonna you're gonna be here for a while doing this and you want to go this way a little bit this way You just want to work that hole. So I'm gonna take them down um, And I'm gonna show what they look like All right, so right here you can see uh, I have them um, Pretty much done overall. So I, I kind of came in on it one way right like this And then I would go to the other side of the crank and kind of hit it like this uh, Just to get both sides, but you can see it's not too terribly much but it's just enough. So right now, um, you can kind of feel an edge on all the holes, it has like a burr. So we're gonna hit this with some 400 grit right here. And then we're gonna polish the crank. I, we'll probably do 1,000, uh, 1,500, and then we'll hit it with some actual polish and microfiber. Uh, and then I, yeah, you can just kind of feel a little bit of a edge, but. We'll take all that off. So you want to do this before you polish. But I'm going to go ahead and do pretty much all the other holes. So I'll show from a little bit different of an angle here. But there you go. You can see they're elongated versus um, versus here's a stock one, and there's the. So yeah, we're just gonna do that to every single hole in the whole crank. All right, so here I have the crankshaft teardrop. Uh, you can see all the holes have been done. Take them. But yeah, everything's teardrop. So what I'm gonna do now is like there's a little burr you can kind of catch with your nail right there so i'm gonna hit over all the holes like that with um some 400 grit sandpaper and then anywhere if i nicked anything uh hit that with 
some 400 to take it off. I'm gonna check, you gotta check everything extremely good. And then I'm gonna cut long strips of like 1,000 and then we're gonna hit the whole thing because you got that little bit of, uh, in the center, you got where the pistons were. Yeah, right here. You gotta clean all that garbage off. So we're gonna hit that with 1,000 on the whole journal and then we're gonna tear some um, microfibers and hit it with some polish. All right, so I'll show how to do one set here. So you got the um, two holes up here. I'm just gonna take my sandpaper, kind of cup it a little bit, and you just wanna get on so you get that little burr off. It's kinda hard to show on camera, so I can avoid it. Um, just work it, and sometimes I'll spray it with a little bit of uh, lubricant, like WD-40, and do it with oil. Sometimes it works a little better, but you just kind of work it until you can't catch your nail on it. Like even that little bit, I can't. It's fine. So that means your oil won't shear and your bearing won't catch it. So you do that on both of them. I'm going to do a little bit more here just to be sure. I like to actually round the corners a little bit. I'm going to do the same over here. And we just take it, get in that little groove. And you could probably tell on the camera, but that's how you want to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, get these exactly how I want, and then I'm going to show uh, when I hit with the 1200 on everything. Alright, so now you can see I got the whole crank uh, done with the 400, and then I just went ahead and hit right over the holes with some 6. But everything's nice and smooth, there's no gouges. Uh, so now what I'm going to do, I got some uh, 1200 grit I'm going to run on it just to clean up kind of the, where the little oil is on the edge and the center and just give it an overall uh, nice polish. So I'm going to soak it with some of my WD-40 and then just get it on here and I'm just going to work it back and forth. You kind of have to pull it all sorts of different directions. And you'll have to rotate the crank around to get like on the bottom side or and all around it. But do this one just so I can show it real quick. All right, so now, wipe it off. So I'll bring the camera down and we'll show what it actually looks like. So you can see it's nice and clean now. But I'm going to hit it a little bit more, and it feels really good, really smooth now. But you can see the difference between it's clean here, and then it's just kind of uh, nasty over here. But we're just going to go around, hit the whole thing like that, and I'll be back. And here is the result after 1200 grit. Looks pretty good. Nice even finish. And you could end it there. That is technically good enough. But I'm going to take it a step farther with some um, polish and a microfiber. It takes it just a little bit farther to make it look like a mirror. You don't have to, but I'm going to do it anyway. But it looks really good. You can see around the holes. Looks really clean. So really good result for no money spent so far on the crank.
All right, so here's the last step of the crankshaft. Uh, I'm getting some just standard metal polish, and I cut up strips of uh, microfiber, uh, and we're just going to put it on the crank and just work it back and forth. And you just want to work it back and forth for a while and then you'll just clean it off and you get almost a mirror finish. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and polish all of it and then come back and show it with the camera. Alright, so next step on our engine build is to get the block clean. Uh, you got all that nasty um, metal and stuff in there so we're going to use this the standard degreaser uh, we're going to soak down everything uh, then you're going to want to get like a microfiber towel because you want to get all the microscopic mess out of your cylinders i'm going to get a brush brush all i can and we're going to get the pressure washer and you got to make sure you blow down in the oil areas that's probably the most important because then if it's in metals in your oil area uh, galleys then it's just going to go right in your bearings and then uh, your rebuilt motor is no good but we're just going to go ahead and soak everything down and let it sit and start brushing. And then really the second most important thing is after we get it all pressure washed, uh, you got to get it perfectly dry so otherwise rust will start. So you need an air compressor really to do this. All right, so while I'm cleaning everything, uh, something else you need is some of these nylon brushes. Uh, I use these on the crankshaft mainly, but uh, all these holes in the crank when you clean it, because I don't think I'm going to show it on camera. Uh, you'll just soak the crank up and everything, and same with the block, and then you just stick these in all the holes and then you know you can get every little bit of uh, material out so every little hole in the block that you can get to with these brushes clean it I and mean, you can see it's it's dirty but we're gonna work around clean everything up good and use a microfiber inside the cylinders all right so I got the engine uh, all scrubbed down uh, for the first time got all the holes cleaned out inside the cylinders clean the microfiber uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pressure wash it uh, for the first time, get all the big stuff out, and then we'll soap it and scrub it again.